This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. How we praise and we thank God for this day and for this very special week in the life of the Christian church. Uh, the experts told us earlier this week that as it relates to this pandemic, this would be a rough week, and it has been. We've lost more people this week than any one week uh, during the duration of this pandemic in America. This was a rough week over 2,000 years ago in the life of our Lord. Uh, but we look back now and we call this very day Good Friday. He died, he was buried, but thank God for Easter Sunday morning. And as we look back in reflection, we don't call it Bad Friday, we call it Good Friday. Because we know in the life of the child of God that every Good Friday will be followed by an Easter Sunday resurrection. Brothers and sisters, we are Easter people. We have a living hope in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You know, when you think about the life of our Lord, our Lord's life was filled with stars and scars. Star appeared Bethlehem when he was born, but that Good Friday was filled with scars. It's an amazing thing to think about God with scars. The Bible makes much about the scars of Jesus. It's not a small thing. It's a major thing in the life of our Lord. The scars that Jesus bore were so important that he carried them with him back to heaven as a souvenir of his visit on earth. His scars are the only thing in heaven that's man-made. He brought those scars back to heaven in his hands, the wound in his side, the nail print in his feet, are all a memorial of his humanity. And when he comes again, he will come back with those very same scars for they will tell his story. So the question is, what can we learn from the scars of our Lord? Well, first of all, his scars tell us that he suffered. Our Lord's scars are testimony to show us how he suffered for us. A gruesome sight was our Lord on that cross. The Bible says he had been beaten and battered beyond human recognition. His brow was scorned by the thorn, crown of thorns laid on his head. His back was lacerated from the beating of the whip all night. His hands and nails were, hands were pierced by nails and his feet were riveted by spikes. Our Savior had to suffer before he could save. Jesus is the answer to all our questions about suffering. From time to time we, we want to know why do men suffer? But there's a greater question. Why does God suffer? He suffered for us. His scars tell us He suffered. But then secondly, His scars tell us He sympathizes. Nobody really knows the pain that can fill the human heart like our Lord Jesus Christ. When we suffer, He suffers. When we are tested, 
He sympathizes with us. To remind us at times like these, the Lord knows and understands what we're going through. The writer to the Hebrews wrote, For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weakness, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. That simply says all the things that pain us, all the things that bring suffering and trials and troubles into our lives, the Lord sympathizes. He's touched. He knows. He cares. He feels. He understands. And He loves us. And in days and times like these, we have to remember that. That we have a Christ who understands whether we're battling coronavirus or we've got family and friends going through it, or we're dealing with the pain and the trial of being laid off, or a loss of job, or even having to shelter in place all alone. He sympathizes. He understands. But then finally, his scars tell us he saves. Why was Jesus nailed to the cross? Why did he endure the painful and shameful death of the cross? The Bible says without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. It wasn't those nails in his hands that held him to that cross, but it was the cords of a redeeming love, the greatest demonstration of love is the death of our Lord Jesus on Calvary's cross. He died that Friday. He died voluntarily. He didn't have to die. The Bible says he chose to die. For he says in John chapter 10, No man taketh my life. I lay it down myself. He says, I have the power to lay it down and I have the power to take it up again. Jesus died voluntarily, but he also died vicariously. Christ died for us. Romans 5 and 8 says, God commended his love towards us and that while we were yet in sin, Christ died for our sins. He died in our place. Here's the reality. I should have been crucified. I deserved to die. Nails should have been driven into my hands. Spikes should have riveted my feet. A crown of thorns should have been pressed down on my brow. A sword should have pierced my side, but I shout hallelujah today because Jesus Christ took my place. He died as our substitute. He died as our sacrifice. And brothers and sisters, when that day comes and I shall bow before him in heaven, someone said, when I see Jesus, it will be a man. No, when I see Jesus, it will be thank you. Thank you for giving your life as a ransom for my lost soul. His scars tell us he suffered. His scars says he sympathizes. He understands. He cares. He feels our pain. But ultimately, his scars remind us that he saved, died to save us. Let's pray. Gracious God, our Father, we thank you. We thank you for your love demonstrated at Calvary through your Son, Jesus Christ, who died on an old rugged cross. We thank you for Christ, the cross, and an empty tomb. And we thank you that even now, he sits at your right hand and he makes pardon and intercession for us. Continue to bless us, strengthen us, and keep us. 
for we pray and ask it all in the wonderful name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Let's not forget, Sunday is Easter Sunday. I know we are not able to gather as a church family. We are now the church scattered. But the church is not about where we are. The church is about who we are. We are believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, and we're going to celebrate Easter as never before. In our homes, as we gather to be a part of the live streaming, uh, let's, let's be dressed for Easter service. And then I'm going to ask you to take a selfie and uh, to sit it in, and we're going to post it so we can see one another on Easter Sunday. Our prayer call will be this Saturday at 6 p.m. We're going to change our, Friday, our Wednesday prayer call and move from 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. I'll say more about that uh, in the coming days. And then our live streaming begins at 8.45 with our Sunday School Review. And then our Easter worship will begin promptly at 9 a.m. Let's all be a part of worship on Easter Sunday. Also, I want to continue to say thank you to those of you who continue to support uh, your church and the work of the kingdom uh, by way of your giving. Uh, those means and opportunities to give are being displayed now, and I hope you will continue to support uh, your church and this ministry and the ministry of your pastor. I miss you. Again, I look forward to the day when we will come again and meet together as brothers and sisters in the Lord Jesus Christ. Until then, stay healthy, stay safe, stay home. God bless you.